point is like, I don't understand how nowadays people are more inclined to thinking racism is so prominent. And it's just so sad how through propaganda and through the media, they just try to make everybody think that black people are so oppressed, black people need white people. No, 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 you're, you're, you're oppressed. You need us to help you get to another level every four years, because that's what it is. Welcome to the Fall Estate. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. A quick reminder, the Fall Estate is now on Locos.com. So click the link in the description to support our work, and I absolutely appreciate it. I have with me Titus Ellis Smith. He is an influencer and ambassador for TPUSA and co-host of the Smith Bros podcast, and we're going to tell you how to get that here in a minute before we leave. Uh, Titus, thank you so much, man, for coming on. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And so tell us, TPUSA, what is that and what is its purpose? Uh, Turning Point USA is an organization founded by Charlie Kirk, who, uh, from what I understand, is really um, focused on trying to bring this message of conservative conservatism and freedom um, to the youth. Because nowadays, I mean, the left, um, their whole purpose is to attack the young people and yeah. confuse them. And so Charlie Kirk, um, to my understanding, is very, very um, focused on bringing youth to realize truth and reality and not fall for the schemes of the left, especially with what they're trying to do in, in schools. He has uh, chapters at different schools, high schools. I just actually just interviewed a 15-year-old girl from Nashville, Tennessee, who had, is um, – She's having a rally against gender mutilation or a, a bodily mutilation for transgender kids. She's to oppose it in Tennessee. So uh, it's kind of cool. He's involved in a lot of that kind of stuff. Nice. And you are an ambassador for them. Exactly. What is an ambassador and, and what do you do for them? Um, an ambassador is basically so they'll take on a lot of influencers to become ambassadors for them. It's kind of like a way for us to um, expand uh, the message of Turning Point. So we'll talk a lot about what it is he's trying to do or we'll um, try and whether we're like promoting merch or promoting an event or trying to get people awakened to something um, that they are that breaking news that they released. We'll kind of just kind of push it forward. Okay. So, uh, so basically, we'll have like a lot of influence with a big reach or influence on a bunch of people. And so if their demographic can um, be seen, what Turning Point is trying to get out. That can really help with the movement that we're all a part of. So, oh, okay. I was looking at some of your videos and and um, oh, tell us about the Smith Bros. What's that about? Uh, so me and my brother, we both started this uh, journey a couple of years ago on TikTok. Just started making a lot of videos about um, conservatism during the 2020 election. Uh, the debates were going on with Trump and Biden. And uh, I was working my door-to-door -door job, which is registering people to vote. And I remember I was on my break in my car and I was really frustrated about him lying during the debate because, you know, he did that multiple times. And so I just made a video ranting in my car with my frustration on Biden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it started, it just did well. So I kept going and kept making more videos about it. Didn't realize it was, there was even a space for random people, you know, because like obviously there's people that have their shows and created this platform, but it was all... They all did it differently, whoever it was. And so I didn't realize there was even people doing that like daily. Right. But I just started making videos and it started growing really fast um, before I got banned on that. <laughs> and then I switched over to YouTube and Instagram. And then my brother just kind of did the same thing. My little brother, we all just, we just started doing it. And then I brought him on my channel a couple times on YouTube. And people are like, oh my gosh, you guys are so fun together. Um, you guys should really do shows together. So we're like, okay, well, let's make a show, a separate show. So he has his channel, I have my channel. And then we decided just to do one together as well. So that's what Smith Bros, our last name Smith. So we just kind of, Smith Bros. Amazing. No yeah, no so, copyright problems there. <laughs> nice, man. So I saw in your video, you said that you are a Christian. I am, yeah. And what is a Christian? What is a Christian? A follower of Christ. And you follow Christ? I do. A and how do you do that? How do I do that? Yeah. By submitting to his word. Um, no, obviously I'm not perfect, but I am believe the things that he, that Jesus taught. And I want to show the world that as well. And I gave my life um, up to him 
So it's his to command and follow. Um, there's obviously a lot more of being a Christian, you know, action, <laughs> fr- fruit, so many things. But uh, how yeah. has it helped you to be a Christian? How has what helped me? Yeah. How has it helped you to be a Christian? Um, honestly, when you're living right and not uh, following the sin c- continuously, when you're actually a Christian that wants to live right for Christ, there's a lot of peace um, for you. Um, even though there's things going on around the world and negative things and I'm not saying there's never, never ups and downs, but like there's been a lot of peace and, um, and I just kind of feel like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Like God, he designed you the way he did. And so when you're living for him, it's like, even if you're not great, you're better than you could be. Um, and I want, there's, I want people to know his love. You know, I've experienced how, how good he is through my life. Do you have um, perfect peace? What was that? Do you have perfect peace? Do I have, uh, that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have it? Uh, do I have perfect peace? That's a good, I've never been asked that before. I mean, I have the Prince of Peace. <laughs> who follows, who, who <laughs> what, what does that mean? I have the Prince of Peace. Uh, God, you know, God is the Prince of Peace. Jesus. Um, but I don't know if I, if it's something accessible to me, I am working on that. <laughs> Do you believe it's possible to have perfect peace while you live on earth? Um, that's a good question. I'm, I feel like yes, but then I don't know. Yes. I, I think I'm going to say, uh, <laughs> Do you believe that has God ever answered your prayers? Yeah. He has answered your prayers before? Yeah. <clears throat> he without getting into your personal life, can you give me a an example of a prayer that God answered for you? Um, I mean this is kind of <laughs> small, I guess, but I, I used to work at Costco and <laughs> I remember I was working the, the night shift. Really late. I got out at 11 every night and I, you know, they, within the company, they have jobs you can apply for. And I remember praying to God that I could get this position in major sales. Cause at the time I was a night merch and major sales, instead of getting off at 11, the latest you would get off is nine o'clock. And I was like, if I get off nine, that means I'll show up a little bit late, but I can still make it to the young adult service that I wanted to go to on Thursdays. And I remember I was like, if I could just switch that up, that would be so nice. So I remember praying to God, God, please, I want this position. They put a position up for that um, department. And so I started praying and asking God. And I didn't, they actually offered the job to someone else. And then I was like, dang, well, I prayed. This is so unfortunate. And then like a week later, the, the general manager of the of the of that Costco came up to me and said, do you still want to work in this department? And I said, yes, I do. And within like a week or two, uh, I was transferred to that position. It was a moment where I was like, dang, God didn't answer it. And then a week <laughs> later, bah, he did. <laughs> And do you believe that, um, and so you said, you call Jesus, would you say Prince of Peace? Yeah. What does that mean? He's, well, you know what peace is, um, and I guess he's the prince of it, but he's also the creator of all everything. So I guess he'd be the prince over everything. (laughs) (laughs) And so what does the prince do? I don't understand the prince part. What does that mean? I think it's just in the scripture that they say that he's the prince of peace. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I'm not a theologian by any means, but I definitely am. Um, Do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Yeah. And, and, and how and why? Well, you know, ever since, you know, Adam and Eve or Adam did what he did, that we brought, we were brought into this fallen state of sin, nature, and, you know, the devil did what he did, uh, in, in deceiving. Speak Eve. up for me. I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I said speak from the ever, chest. <laughs> ever since, uh, you know, Adam and Eve, you know what they did or what Adam did because Eve was deceived, but Adam knew we've been in a fallen state ever since. Uh, I mean, Jesus came so that we could, you know, be saved and everything, but the, the world is still, um, in its place. It says in the Bible that the, the devil is the God of this world. Right. right. So, we're in the fallen state. Now we're giving the opportunity to, to follow Christ and, and to make it to heaven and, and help bring other people there. But 
we are still in the fallen state in this world. Even if you believe in God, have you been born again of the Father? Yeah, if you, you believe in God. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. You have been. And so are you still in a fallen state? I'm, I'm not in a fallen state. Oh, okay. Um, go or, ahead. And, oh, go ahead. No, finish your point. I said, I'm not in a fallen state. I don't think believers are because we have been, uh, we're citizens of heaven now because we accepted Christ. But um, we're still in a fallen world, although we might, this may not be our world. Oh, I see. I want to ask about one thing about TPUSA, uh, and they're working with kids in high schools and colleges, right? Yeah. Are they having an impact for the good on the kids? I, I believe so, especially after meeting this girl who's 15 years old. Uh, obviously, I mean, her parents, she was raised in a good household, from my understanding, from talking to her. Yeah. But uh, I think the fact that Turning Point has made such an impact on her to where she's going out and having holding events to stop child mutilation at, the, at that young of an age, then right. I would say that's she's one of many that has been impacted by the organization. So, yeah, I believe so. Oh, OK. That's great, man. You mentioned that the Adam and Eve story. Uh, is it true that evil of this world come through the woman? Comes through the woman? Yes. I don't, I don't believe so. Why not? Adam, because I can't quote it perfectly, but I believe that it's because of what Adam did that we have fallen. Because she was deceived and Adam was aware that that was the wrong thing to do. I think it's because of what Adam did. And l I mean, unless you want to say that because of his, because of Eve saying that to him, he gave into his lustful nature to please his wife and did it. I guess you could say it's a woman's fault if you're going to do it that way. But I believe the Bible makes it um, clear that it's Adam. So when the woman listened to the devil, she disobeyed her husband. And she listened to the devil. Did Satan become her daddy, her God? Never thought of it uh, that way. Well, yeah, she definitely disobeyed. She was in the wrong for sure. Right, because remember before she listened to the devil, she was listening to her husband. She obeyed yeah. her husband who obeyed his father and things were fine, were fine. And then one day she went shopping out in the, uh, in the, uh, the field there, wherever they live, the garden. Yeah, yeah. Adam said, go and get some breakfast, lunch, and dinner for me. When I come back home, I want breakfast. So she went shopping, and while shopping, she met up with Satan. And Satan was like, E, what you doing listening to Adam? You could be your own woman. And, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no, devil. Adam, I'm listening to my husband. I'm, 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 I am obeying my husband. And so she went home, and she told Adam, I was at the market today, and I saw Satan, and he tried to convince me to listen to him and not you. And Adam was like, yes, yeah, stay away from the devil. Because the devil had tempted Adam too, but he said no. He rebuked the devil. And so she said, okay, everything's fine. And a long story short, she went shopping another day. And she was at the market again. And he was like, Eve, you still listen to that man? Take, you can be your own woman. You can be liberated. You can vote. Take off your bra. You can kill the babies in the womb. And Adam was like, cool. I mean, Eve was like, cool. So she listened to Satan. And at that very point, Satan became her God, and she would no longer obey her husband. And then she went home and told Adam, Adam, I'm my own woman. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking off my bra. I'm protesting. I want the right to vote. And he, Adam was like, what happened? I listened to the devil. He's not my God. He's my boss, not you. And then Adam listened to the woman because she said, don't listen to your father anymore. You need to listen to me. And Adam listened to the woman. And the moment he listened to the woman, the woman became his God. So today, Satan is the woman's God and, and the woman is the man's God. That's why men are afraid of women. And, uh, but Christ came so that we can forgive our mothers who really set us up to listen to the to the woman because most men are afraid of, all men are afraid of mothers. 
She turned them away from the father. And now men are afraid of women because mama is their God. But Christ came so we can, he defeated the devil and we can return once we forgive our mothers and our fathers for not protecting us from the woman. Then because the father afraid of the woman too, he's married to his mama. And, uh, and so the woman will no longer be the man's God and he can show her how to overcome the hell that's in her. What do you think about that? I have never heard that before. <laughs> I've never heard anything like that. Uh, it doesn't make sense. I mean, yes and no. Like, I don't know if I. Uh, I'm afraid of my mom. <laughs> I don't think she. I guarantee you, you're afraid of your mother. I was more afraid of my dad than my mom growing up. <laughs> but only because your mother made you think your dad was bad and he wasn't, and you you identify with her instead of your father. She turned you away from him. When she's really the victimizer and your father is the victim. You know how okay. he, he couldn't deal with your mother? What was that? You know how your father could not deal with your mother when you were growing up? No, I don't know. That. I didn't know that. My parents are, are happily married. Uh, no, that's what you think. Huh? That's what you think. Your dad <laughs> ain't happy. <laughs> you don't think so? Uh-uh. You don't think any husband's happy with his wife? No, because they, uh, uh, unless they have been born of the spirit of the father and they have well, overcome they, the mama. So well, let me ask, what do you think about that story? Oh, let me ask about your mama. Yeah. Why don't you be honest with your mama when she trying to control you and you got to call her every day and she pretend to be a victim? Why don't you tell her to back off? <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> Have you forgiven her for what she's done to you? Impose her will on you? I mean, there's I mean, there's levels to that though, because when you're a kid, your parents need to impose their will on you. No, you they don't. don't. The mama, when the dad is supposed to protect you from the mother, so she doesn't do that because when she imposes a will on you, she recreates your her image. Well, no, they're like it's not like one or the other. They're united on on whether or not on their discipline towards me is what I mean. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> and so have you forgiven her for imposing her will on you? I uh, I don't think I have to forgive her for anything. She doesn't I mean, she doesn't impose my will. They're both Christians, they're both believers, uh pastors actually. So uh I don't um They both pastors? Yeah. You got a pastor mama? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I understand why you moved back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, how did why did your father let your mother become a pastor? That doesn't make sense. God doesn't call women. I have no idea. Have you ever asked him why did you let her become a pastor? I have not. Why not? Because that's none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> were were women created to lead or follow? Follow. And so why would your father put your mother in a leadership role then? If it's not even in the woman nature to lead. Why would he let her? Well, you don't know because you haven't asked, right? <laughs> well, she's, I mean, he's the head of the house and head of the church and everything. But he's is not. he the head of her? Yeah. Does she obey him? Obey him? Yeah. I mean, I don't know about their personal conversations. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but you know if your mom obey your daddy. You, you grew up there. Well, I mean, and what what's what's an example? Uh, that she obey her husband. I I guess I, I I'm trying to think like an example like obey her like obey like go pick me up some groceries like obey or like <laughs> what stay do you home and raise my children clean my house. If my children need discipline, let me know. Don't you discipline them because it's not in her nature to do it. She doesn't have the patience. She doesn't have the love to do it. And, and when he got home, he would correct the children rather than her. And she would just cook, clean, and stay pregnant in the kitchen, barefoot and pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> she, she did cook and clean a lot. Uh, well, actually, we had a, our, my grandma, step-grandma, would cook and clean a lot, too, when she moved in with us when we were younger. Oh, what uh, a mess. I guess. Uh, but, <laughs> No, she, um, I mean, it's not that controlling, I guess. It's more of like, they just were like a partnership. He was the head. He would definitely have the final say on a lot of things, on most things, everything actually with him. 
Uh, he'd be like, I have the final say on a lot of stuff. Not in a, like a controlling way, just he does because he's ahead. Uh, but well, He's ahead of his wife. Yeah. And when you ask him now, why did he let her become a pastor? Because God doesn't call women to be pastors, ministers, and things like that. Because women cannot lead. They were created to follow. Yeah. I mean, there is a scripture on women leading other women uh, in, I think it's, I don't know if it's Timothy or not. Um, but you mean like leading a man? Yeah. Leading, okay. period. Women don't know how to lead. Would you ever let a woman lead, lead you? What you? Like, if they were my boss, I guess. So <laughs> I got in a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have no say over that. But, um, I mean, in a, in a relationship, I think it's not even like, would you or would you not you? Most women will submit to a real man. So what? it's not like, it's not even like, it's not, it's like one of those unspoken things. Cause obviously the Bible says that. So I agree. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying like most women, like we're designed the, that the, what you're saying, most our people are designed, designed that way, unless they're just very rebellious against God. So like, you don't really got to say to a woman, submit to me and obey me. If you're, if you're living, being a biblical husband, most of them will usually just submit anyway. But you're not going to find and you're not going to find one like that because all women hate their fathers. They've been turned away from them. And so they're trying to be like the not men. All women. Have you ever met a woman that did not hate her father? I yeah. mean, that has not been turned away from her father, become like her mother? I know a lot of women that don't hate their father. But I guarantee you they become like their mothers. I don't know about that. I can't speak for everyone, but I know a lot of women that love their both their parents. Well, you got a point that... Most people love their fathers, but they've been made to believe that they hate their fathers by their mothers, and they don't realize they have identified with the mother because she played victim. But let me ask, because of time, did your mother was your mother perfect in the way she raised you? I don't think anybody's perfect in the way they raised anyone. How about, no. your, mo- how about your mother? No, she wasn't perfect. And have you forgiven her for those things that you were not perfect in? I mean, I guess, but I wasn't perfect as a kid either, so. I know because you were acting like her. She recreated your image, so you can help her. No, no, no. That's not why. It's because no kids are perfect. They have to be raised and taught how to how to operate in a society, which means they're going to make mistakes. And that's not the mother's fault. That's just humans. We. But have you forgiven her for the mistakes she made with you that you didn't I like know. that would irritate you while growing up? I mean, if, she, if I was irritable about something that was that was wrong on my part, it doesn't really. I don't need to forgive her. She needs to forgive me for my behavior. No, you couldn't help yourself. You're the kid. You were patterning after her. You didn't know what you were doing. You became like you what you what, hate. I know it wasn't patterning after my father. I mean, you could be doing that too, especially if the father's weak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, my father is not weak. Uh, Will you forgive your? Your mother, now that you know you need to forgive her, will you go and apologize? I'm sorry for resenting you for the things she did wrong. I never she resented meant her. She well, but... I don't think I resented her at all. Have you forgiven I, I, her for those little things that would irritate you about her? I guess, but I don't think she... I owe her forgiveness or vice versa. You owe it to yourself to forgive her so you can enter into the kingdom. God said that when you go and forgive, he will forgive you. Right, but I, what I mean is I'm, I don't think any wrong was done, so I don't think there's... So nec- she did nothing wrong? I'm not saying she's never did anything wrong. If, okay, if she had done something wrong, I don't hold anything against her, so I've, I've forgiven her. Amazing. You told her that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why didn't you tell her that? God said, before you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must go and forgive, and I will forgive you and draw you in. Why have you told... I thought you said you were a Christian... Why have you gone and forgiven her? Uh, because I don't even know what I'd be forgiving her for. I guess you say forgiving her for all the mistakes she made or that I made. Those I'm, little you, irritations that they will irritate you that she put upon you. So for me being wrong? She, she caused you to act out. It wasn't your fault. Have you forgiven her for that? She didn't cause me to act out. I think if anything, she should forget. I should ask her for forgiveness for my behavior no it's you God no, no, no. said to forgive them he never said ask for forgiveness but think about think about how if your parents tell you this is what you're supposed to do and you disobey them you don't ask them for forgiveness 
or you don't ask them to, you don't ask them for forgiveness because of what you've done. No, you're never supposed to ask them. You forgive them for the mistake they made and God will forgive you. Okay, yeah. I mean, if they ever made a mistake, then I would, I would forgive, I would forgive them. Have you told her? No. Why not? Because I don't hold anything against her. Amazing. I guess. So what's important to you? What's important to me? Yes. What do you mean? What's important to Titus? A lot of my family is important to me. In what way? In a way that I care about them and I want the best for them. I love them. Oh, I see. Anything else important to you? Yeah, my relationship with God is important to me. That's most important, obviously. And so have you forgiven your father for not protecting you from her? I don't think he needed to protect me from her. She didn't do anything to me. <laughs> have you noticed women don't have love? What? Where is this coming from? <laughs> women don't have love. Right. They act like they have love to give when they only have hate. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? Women have plenty of love to give. You know how, how protective a mother is over a child? Yes. Any danger is ever going to happen to that kid, she will jump in front. I mean, there's stories of women jumping in front of a car to protect her kid. Right. That's love. That's, that's love. That's not love. Why do you call that love? That's not love. Right. Yeah, why do you call it love? I mean, Jesus did it for us, and that's love. That was his greatest set, a- act of love, is dying for all of us. If he jumped mom, in front of a car? If a mo- Dying for us. Oh. If, a, if a woman is willing to die for a kid, just like Jesus <laughs> died for us. Is his not an act of love? So you, so you believe that women have love to give? I think everyone has love to give. How about women? Everyone, women, espe- yes, women especially. And where do they get especially? And where do they get that love from that they have to give? Just like every human has a capacity to love. Where do women get the love from that they have to give? Where do you get it from? Where do they get it from? I'm assuming the same place a man gets his. And, and where do the women get it from? What do you mean? Where do they get it from? <laughs> the love you say that they have to give, where do, do they get it from? It's inherent when you're a mother. But where do they get it from? That's a great question. Can you, do you know where men get it from? Maybe that'll help me understand what you're trying to answer. <laughs> the answer you're trying to get, because I don't know what you're asking. You never wonder if women got so much, if women have so much love to give, where are they getting this love from? And how come this love only create problems? It never saw problems. I don't know. I feel like this is a very general uh, statement. Like everyone's every individual is different. Not all women are the same. Not all men are the same. Yes, there's a lot of similarities with them. Maybe like a lot of women are stereotypically more emotional, uh, are more prone to, uh, I don't know, be vicious when they're upset. I don't know. Yeah. But, but that doesn't mean all of them revert right to viciousness some of them will have self-control in that area some of them have learned from their mistakes they're everyone's in a different walk in life they're not all the same not everyone's the same i don't i don't give generalizations to whole demographic of the human species (laughs) like have you ever met a woman that had real love yeah you did why do you think you do you believe emotions emotion is love no not not exactly right so women are very emotional they, and, they are. And an emotional person don't have love. They only have hate. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> no, it's not true. Your love is in your actions, too. What? You can show love through your actions. Well, you how? How? Yeah. Providing for someone. They're supposed someone. to provide for you. They had you. Exactly. You're supposed to, but some people don't. Right, but they still supposed to. That's not love. That's agree, a, agree. That, that that's a love. responsibility they have to do because they made a baby, but that's not love. It's still love, though. Uh-uh. Because it's hateful. Because what's hateful is to not do that. Have a child and decide that, I, you know what? I don't care about them. I'm going to let them find them for themselves on the street or give them up. I mean, obviously, some reason people give it up for good reasons, I guess. So when I'll, you ask your father, why did he let your mother become a preacher? Did, did I ask him that? I said, will you? Uh, I mean, I, I, sure. Yeah. And just listen to what he has to say. All right. But let me ask. I think I already know how that's going to go, but yeah, we, let me ask you what, <laughs> um, let me ask, do you believe in the order of God? Yeah. What's the order? God, um, 
we submit to God. Um, the woman submits to the man who submits to God. Um, and then the children are under that. So God in Christ? Yeah. Christ in man? Mm -hmm. Man over woman and woman over children, right? Yeah. You, you believe in that order? Yeah. Good. And if that's the order, why would any man sit under a woman? Why would any man look to a woman to lead him since she's supposed to be following, following him? In, in what? In life period. He's supposed to oh. show her how to overcome the hell that's in her. He has to direct her in how to deal with the children because it's not in her nature to do it. Since mm, Satan hell? is her daddy, Satan is her God. What do you mean Satan is her God? Because of Eve. Satan is everyone's God until they No, the woman is the man's God until he overcome. But the, the devil is the woman's God because she listened that, to the devil. Is that scriptural? Yeah. In Genesis, you remember when the woman listened to the devil? Yeah, but when does it say did she that? Become, didn't he become her daddy when she obeyed him? Is that, is that what the Bible says? Yes. Where does it say that the, the and woman... It, and in Genesis, read the Adam and Eve story, all right? And you will see when, when Eve gave it to Adam... Um, he became her God, and when Adam gave it to Eve, she became his God, and that's why God that's, said that's that. What it says. That's what it says. Yeah, right. Genesis. Yeah, and every I, time I, I, that's I why God why. said every time the man listened to the woman, he will suffer. Have you noticed every time you listen to the woman, you suffer, you regret it later? No. I yeah. You like what the. <laughs> No, I've had many conversations with my mom where she's giving me good advice. And oh, I, my God. I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. <laughs> Why not have it with your father? Are you joking? <laughs> I'm serious. Why not have the, a man should never, ever have a come tell a woman his weakness? No. A, a, you, a, son, a son shouldn't be able to talk to his mother? Not about his weakness. Not about weakness. He should talk to his father, not his mother. Not he about could, He should correct his mother, but not... Look I, should correct, I should correct my mother. Is that what you're saying? Yes. All men. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you ever tell a woman your weakness? Uh, my weakness. What do you mean? So, so I guess my. I, it's I like, I oh, uh, I had a hard day today and somebody hurt my feelings or I'm sad. I'm emotional and all that. Would you ever share your weakness with a woman? Uh, if, if it's my wife, I'm not married, but if I, if I was married, I had a hard day. Yeah. I'd probably say that to them. Like, yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy what happened to work. I probably wouldn't say it so mopey like that, but I'd probably <laughs> be like, I'd be like, yeah, it was rough. This dude is being ridiculous or it was annoying. I could that like, I guess. I I'd, promise you, if you ever tell your, your, your mama, your grandmama, your girlfriend, your fiance, or your wife, or the female psychologist or counselor, your problem, they would judge you all the way to the grave. They would never forget it. Really? They can't help it because <laughs> Satan is their daddy. Well, not if you're a Christian, they're not your daddy. He's no, not your No, Christian daddy. ones are the worst one. They're Bible thumpers, but their hearts have not changed. They still have anger of the heart. Do you have anger? Do I have anger? Do you have anger? Uh, no. <laughs> you have no anger? I mean, I've been angry, yes. Do you do you ever get angry now? Sometimes, maybe. You still get angry? And why? Why don't you overcome it if you're a Christian? Yeah, I mean, I do overcome it. But how are you going to overcome it if you don't forgive your mother so you can overcome her mindset and emotions? How does this, how does me being angry come back to my mom? That's where it comes from. That's why God said you must be born of the spirit of the father. All who are born of the flesh are born in sin. And that's why you must be born of the spirit of the father so you can overcome the state of the mother. Well, Father God, not your biological well, father. Well, you have to love, if you don't love your earthly father, you would never love God. Well, you, you do love your, wait, what? <laughs> if you don't love your earthly father, you would never love God. That can't be true because there's people that don't know their earthly father and they love God. But they still, they don't love their earthly, they're yearning for their fathers, right? Their earthly fathers. Maybe. And if they don't ever forgive their father for not being there or whatever happened, they would never, they'll know about God. They'll quote the scriptures. They'll hoop and holler. They'll carry on. They would know about God, but they won't know him. 
They and, won't know God unless they know their earthly father. Is that unless what you're saying? They, unless they forgive their father's earthly father. Do you disagree with that? Uh, kind. Well, it depends. I, I think you should forgive everyone. So, yes, I agree that you should forgive everyone. Um, but How about your earthly father? Can you be born again of God and have anger toward your earthly father? Uh, can you be born again of God and be and have anger towards your earthly father? I mean, yes. How is that possible? God said that's not possible. How can you say you love him who you never seen and hate or, your earthly father? I didn't say hate. You can have anger towards him. Anger them. is hatred. No. Is anger love? Anger is not love, no. So if it's not love, it's what? Well, I guess it could be God had righteous anger. What? God, the Lord, God had righteous anger. What does that mean? I mean, righteous anger. What does that mean? Huh? What does that mean? It means his anger was righteous. Like it's in the Bible. So <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't, I don't have a Wikipedia uh, definition for you off the top of my head, uh, but that is, that is scriptural. Um, I don't think, I think hatred and anger are pretty like anger can lead to hatred, but I don't think anger is hatred. What, um, anger is hatred. They used to call it hatred, but you know, you know how the world changed the names of things so that it could sound good. So they used to call it hatred when I was growing up. And then they changed because, oh, that's too harsh. Let's call it resentment. And so they changed it to <laughs> resentment. And then they're like, oh, resentment. You can't say you resent your mama. And so, because mama is God. And so they changed it to anger. And now they're trying to even soften the word anger. But anger is hatred. Hatred is of the devil. Anyone who has anger, Satan is their daddy. I don't know if that's... That's true, scripturally. God uh, is love. He's not God anger. Is, well, he, like I said, there's righteous anger. You can, I mean, like, like think about this. What is righteous anger? <laughs> Told you. I don't have a uh, Webster's Dictionary uh, definition for you. So why but, would you use that and not know what it means? Well, I'm just saying it says that in the Bible. Where? That's a great, I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but um, I don't, uh, you can be angry. Like we're, oh, you, You've never been angry before? Before God t- took the spirit of anger away from me, I used to be angry. But so he ever, took, since, he ever took, since, Remember how he said he changed the heart from hate to love? Yeah. If anger was good, why would he remove the hate, the hate from it and then give you his love if anger was good? Or imperfect, though. You're still going to have pitfalls. And, and Not once he removed the spirit of the devil from your heart, you won't have it. So you don't, you've never sinned since being saved? You've never gotten angry since I've being saved? I've never resented anyone since... He took the anger away. Not so one. You, been through been a lot, but it's impossible for me to resent because my heart has been changed to love. Uh, You've never been of angry? Hate. You've never been angry since Prior being Prior to that, I've not been angry in 33, 33 years. You've never been angry? No. Wow. But let me ask Amazing. you this. Huh? Amazing. Amazing. That's right. <laughs> let me ask you this. What is love? What is love? God is love. And what does that mean? First John 4, 8, uh, it means he is. Well, what is everything. love? It means everything God says is love is love. God, if God is love, First John 4, 8 says God is love. It means everything that he says is love. The whole Bible, every, everything that he's ever done, the things that he said, the things that people say are um, like, you know, in this day and age where they say love is love or whatever, this whole movement of the LGBT community and all that stuff, that's not love because God says well, it's love. what is it then? If Let's God say says, the LGBT people are confused. They think that what they feel is love, right? Yeah. So if they ask you, Titus, well, you're a Christian. What is love? What would you say would, to them? I would tell them God is love. But that's not going to do anything for them. Okay, what would you say? Not hating. Once you overcome the anger, you have love. That's still not explaining love, though. Yes, it is. Saying not hating, what's hate? It's anger. It's when you judge yourself and your fellow man. You know how sometimes you judge yourself when you make a mistake, you beat yourself up about it? Uh-huh. That's hatred. That's anger. You're playing God. But if your heart did not have anger in it, you would never judge yourself because you would see how to overcome all things. But it says you can judge. Judge lest you not be judged. It didn't say you can judge. It said if you do judge, you're going to be judged. Yeah, and it says with the same judgment, it will be brought back on Right, so you. it's telling you not to judge. You can judge, though. What? Everyone judges. Everyone judges. But you shouldn't know. We're not allowed as human beings to judge because when we judge one another, we're judging God because we're created in his image. We're not allowed to judge. That's why we forgive. 
We don't accept wrongdoing, but we don't judge it. We don't hate it. But you still make a judgment on a lot of things. Right. That's because you have no love. It's not about not having love. It's just, you, make, let, you make judgments towards things. Let me ask you this. Would you ever vote for a woman? Vote for a woman? Would you ever vote for a woman? Like for president or something? For anything. I don't know. It depends on what you're voting for. Would you ever vote for a woman for anything? Maybe. Depends you would? It, yeah, it depends on what it is. Why would you vote for her knowing that it's not in her nature to lead? Well, who's saying it's for a leading position? Like, what are, they, what are we voting for? If it was between multiple women voting for who who's you, best at making a cake. What would so, you vote? <laughs> oh, if you're making a cake? I'm just saying, like, you, you're you being very broad. There's oh, would you? Okay, I understand what you're saying. Because you said, yeah, if she was baking a cake, I'd vote for her to cook. That's her job, right? But let me ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, there's multiple options of girls. That, like, who, who voted for the best cake? That's voting for a girl. Right. So, I'd so vote for her to bake a cake. Would you ever vote for a ro woman to be in a leadership role? I, I don't know. Probably. It I don't know. Like, if, like think about it like this. If there's... Uh, Two people running for like, even like office or something. Because um, I don't think the Lord says, the Bible says anything about women leading anywhere outside of the church. I think in the church, there's an argument to say that they're not supposed to lead. In the household, there's an argument that they're not supposed to lead. But in terms of like running for office or running for other things, I don't think the Bible says anything about But wouldn't that be a leadership role? Does the Bible need to tell you that that's a leadership role that you should not vote for a woman to lead? No, the Bible doesn't say they can't lead. It the needs to sell you that? Says the lead, they can't. They can't leave their home. So, would you vote for a woman for a leadership role? Possibly. And you would vote for her to lead you. <laughs> lead me? It's a, I don't. You're like not. You're being brought again. They're like, what? What is she? What am I voting for? Is is well, it a not, position? I said, yeah, a we'll vote for her to cook. A political well, power, like voting for a for a job, uh, a manager at a company. Is it like what do you? Would what you it, let's put? I'll make it simpler because of time here, and, and I, I'm black and I'm slow, so I, you probably don't understand. But would <laughs> you ever vote for a woman to be a leader over you? It just depends. Would you ever like, vote for a woman to be a leader over you? It, it honestly just depends on what they're leading me over, leading me in. Would you ever vote for a woman to be a leadership role over you? Same answer. <laughs> I don't know. It, it depends. Maybe if it, if it was a. Uh, well, I don't. I actually I don't know. I don't. I don't know the answer. Have you noticed <laughs> women don't know what they want? Sometimes, yeah. That's that's that can be very true. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. So I got to move on, man. It's amazing how much tight is, how much, how fast is time going by, man. This yeah. is great. Did did you vote for the Great White Hope? The Great White Hope. Yes. Who's the great white hope? Oh, man. I thought you were a conservative. Are you conservative? Are, are, are you talking about Donald Trump? <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? And uh, yes, talking together, about. we will make America great yeah. again. <laughs> that, of course you, I voted for him. The great white hope. Are you going to vote for him this time around? Yeah. Do you think, are you team him or DeSantis? I'm assuming you're him over DeSantis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would, vote, I would vote for Trump, too. Nice. Yeah, 100%. the great white we if ever we needed the great white hope, we need him now. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think he is a great president. Yeah. Uh, I think he did a lot of good. Titus, what's wrong with the blacks? <laughs> what's wrong? With, uh I think there's a lot of them are brainwashed. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, you know, I was raised luckily in a a, a home of conservatism and, and well, Christianity and that kind of like just stems into conservatism. You're not going to be a Christian, not conservative. At least I don't believe you can be. Right. But uh, there's just like a lot of them are raised in homes. It's funny because like technically like their mindset in their everyday life is more conservative. But because of free handouts, because of what they're told by the media about, you know, the, the party switch and all that stuff that's not even true. Uh, they have been brainwashed and mentally enslaved to believe that the Democratic Party is for them when they're not. And so yeah. that's why people, I mean, assuming like you have probably changed a lot of people's minds and I've changed some people's minds to realize the truth. They're not oppressed and all that stuff. 
Um, have you wondered why it's so hard for you, Titans, to change the mindset of most most other blacks? Have you noticed yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'll, I'll be very confused with like how some people just will not budge no matter what factual evidence you bring to them. It's kind of like sad. It's like it's like I'm a, it's like a stubborn pride thing. Like I'm not gonna even I'll, even if you like they get to a point where they can't even refute anything you say, they're still gonna be like, no. Yeah. What, what you're wrong, and I, and and when it comes to that, it's like you know, well, and that's why we are where we are because you're unwilling to to change. And it, it, humility is a big issue in our country. Is people are not willing to be wrong. I'm willing to be wrong, even though yeah, me I, too. I, I'm willing to be wrong. Yeah. If you can present, that's why I keep asking. Even in the questions you asked me today, I'm like, well, where is that in the Bible? Because now I want to go read it to see if that's yeah. What it read says. Genesis. You see that the devil is the woman's god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will do that. But yeah, I, I mean, I've read the Bible many times. I mean, not, I've, you know, and I've read a lot of scripture and I'm not, I don't remember all of it, obviously, but I want to be as accurate as possible. Yeah. I want a huge theological like shift a year ago where I, everything I thought I believed, I disagree with a lot of that now. So I'm very willing to be wrong and learn and grow. So. Do you believe yeah. that racism exists? Uh, I mean, yeah, but not on the scale that they say it does. And, not even and, close. But you do believe that it exists? Yeah, to some degree. What does it look like? Uh, I mean, it's just, it, it's based off the individual, you know, like not everyone's a racist, but obviously there's some people are. Some people raise their kids to believe that certain people, whether it's black uh, Hispanic, whatever it is, are, is lesser than them and that they're superior. And that comes on from both ends. There's black people that are racist against white people. There's white people that are racist against black people. There's some people that it's just, this is how they were raised or what they believe, whether they're demented in the brain or they were and taught that by at a young age. So I think, yeah, it exists. I mean, it clearly exists. And what does it look like? What does it look like? Yeah. It can look like many things. I mean, you could, it, but then it's hard to decipher. You know, you know why? To... Because it doesn't exist. <laughs> it definitely exists. It's, it's a made up lie. And I got proof. Okay, let's hear it. God said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities and wickedness in high places. And that our battle is a spiritual battle. It's a warfare between good and evil. And okay. uh, that is not flesh. It's not physical. It's spiritual, right? But the children of the lie of Satan have made up words to cover up the devil in them. They call it racism rather than call it, it hatred or evil spirits because the devil doesn't want you to see him. So he gives his children words to cover up the lie. I grew yeah. up in Alabama on a plantation under the Jim law, never heard the word racism until the so-called civil rights movement started. And that's when they came up with that word. But prior to that, blacks knew that it was a spiritual battle and that there were blacks who were evil, there were whites who were evil, there were blacks who had overcome and there were whites who were overcome. And blacks never had a leader over them until the civil rights movement. Our battle is spiritual. And as a Christian, we're supposed to know that and not sound like the, wor the world and use the words that they use to cover up the devil. Okay. I can, I can, I can see that because you're, I mean, you're definitely right about uh it's definitely all demonically influenced and spiritual influence yes but i think and and because they think it's physical it has never been resolved and it's only getting worse they use that word to the core right they keep adding to it well it has no meaning anymore right because it never had a meaning it's a cover-up I, I i can low-key understand i can i can get down with that too. Yeah. I, I i mean i agree i'm just it's just like because of the demonic spirits that have taken over certain people, they do not like you because they are thing. evil people. And, and people who have anger are evil people. God called them murderers. So if anger is good, why would God say that anyone that has anger is a murderer? Isn't it hate? Hate is anger. Anyone that has hate. Yeah, that's why I don't. I don't know if I agree with hate being anger. Yeah, it is. It, what, no, because what's because it's good it's, in it's, hate. Hurt. What's good in anger? Anything well, good come from anger? Okay, listen to this for a second. If you put your foot, or not your foot, you put your hand on the stove on accident, and you burn your hand, you're like, ah, and you're immediately like, irritated and angry that that just happened. That's not hateful. 
He's upset that that just happened. But you, you wouldn't be upset. You would go, ah, oh, burn my head, but you wouldn't get angry about it. It wouldn't be a. It you would be angry because you, you got hurt. And you're like, ow, that hurt so bad. You're, you're upset and, and irritable. That and, and even, even if it's your own fault, you're still angry that that happened. You would All, only because you have that spirit in you. No, I don't think that's a spirit of anger. Is it normal for a man to be emotional? Is it normal? I mean, everybody has emotions. Is it normal for a man to be emotional? Everyone has emotions. Is uh, it normal for a man to be emotional? Yes. It, de it depends on what you mean by act. Do we acting on our emotions or being emotional? Is it normal for a man to be emotional? Yes, everyone is emotional. Is it normal for a man to be emotional? Yes. I don't, I don't know what else you want me to say. <laughs> Did you know, have you noticed that any man that has emotions is a woman? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Every man that has emotions is a woman? Like yeah, a trans I want you to pay attention. Like, the next like time you see a man become emotional, notice that he's acting just like a woman. He's acting like his mama. You become <laughs> like what you hate. This is Really? Yeah. This has been my favorite interview ever. <laughs> uh, let me fun. ask. Um, so now do you still believe racism exists? Uh, I believe what you said, but I also believe it does not. Okay. I agree 100% with what you said. I really do. But because of those spirits taking over people and putting that specific desire in our heart to hate people based on their skin color, it does exist, but not in the way that I, not even the way that I thought. I mean, I, I think I Either knew that. Either it exists or it doesn't. It can't be both. I think it does, but. If, if it's a spiritual battle and you know it's spirit, how can it be physical? Because spirits affect the physical. How can it be physical, though? If it's a spirit affecting the body, it's spiritual. Because they affect it in the natural. What? Because the spiritual aspect. Uh, spirit, the spirit that is... Uh, it can't be both. God doesn't say it's physical. Why would you call it that? What do you mean he doesn't say it's physical? He said it's spiritual. Why would you call it physical? If it's happening, the spiritual... Wait, wait. The, the, is, we're not fleshing... Or what is it? The scripture? We're not we fighting... We wrestle against not blood. against flesh and blood. It's spirits. Exactly. But so why spirits, would you call it physical? Those spirits are infiltrating the flesh and blood for them to take action in the physical. Right? It's the spirit that's doing it, though, not the flesh. It's the spirit that's doing it. But it's affecting the flesh. But it's just, if the spirit didn't work through the flesh, the flesh wouldn't do anything, right? If the spirit didn't work, wait, what? If the spirit didn't cause the flesh to, to be angry, the flesh could not get angry or be, as you say, racist. It couldn't be. It need the spirit to do it, right? I agree. So it's spiritual. Yeah, but they still make them do racist things. The devil on. made you do the things you wouldn't ordinarily do and prevent you from doing the things that you would do. So it's spiritual. I agree. Nice. Do you believe white supremacy as this? I mean, it's probably the same thing that you with the uh, with the spirit for you, right? No, I'm asking you. Do you believe white supremacy as this? I believe certain people believe that they are superior based on their skin color, but it's a spiritual thing, like you said. Do you believe white supremacy is this? Uh, yes. <laughs> what the? And so if it, well, if it's spirit, how can it be white supremacy? <laughs> I feel like I was just repeating myself. So yeah, I know. Uh, let me ask. Um, do you love white people? Yeah. You love white people? Uh-huh. Oh, good. Um... Man, this time is up. I got to put you on the hot seat. Okay. It's time to heat this thing up. I'm going to throw you on the hot seat, and I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Okay, will do. The hot seat. Would you ever marry an educated woman? An edu like I went to college? Yes. Uh, Yeah. Do educated women make good wives and mothers? Some. You ever seen that? Have I ever seen that? Yeah. What is a man? What is a man? Yeah. An adult male. <laughs> <laughs> is it a good thing or a bad thing that the white population 
in America is declining? Uh, it depends on why it's declining. Is it a good thing or a bad thing that the white population in America is declining? Is it declining because the minorities are increasing or because they're getting killed off? No. Is it a or good thing colony? that... that no? No? Uh, um, did you take the jab? No. Are UFOs real? Am I what? Are UFOs real? UFO, those I, those flying things, like alien UFOs. Yes, I don't believe so. Is the Earth flat around? That's a great question. Honestly, I feel like I'm. <laughs> I don't want to out myself because I've had <laughs> theories about this, so I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like oof. I, it, at, for a biblical person, you have there's a good argument that it's flat with firmament, the firmament being like a dome over it. But also, then people say they went to space and they have. Uh, I, that's a whole conversation I cannot even have. Right now. <laughs> um, did you know that we celebrate July White History Month in July? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, this is coming out. I believe our seventh year, we celebrate White History Month. You know why we do it in July? Why? Because July just feels white. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doesn't July feel white when you think about it? July feels white? Yeah. I don't I don't know. Vacation time, reflection, celebrating the fourth of July, appreciating <laughs> this great country. Doesn't that just feels white? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> uh we gotta move on. Did the bear does the bear shit in the woods? Does the bear what? Does the bear shit in the woods? Yes. Have you ever told a woman how to, how the cow ate the cabbage? No. True or false? Is abortion worse than slavery? True or false? Abortion is worse than slavery. Yes. True or false? One of the worst things other than abortion that ever happened to the blacks was the civil rights movement. Was that the worst thing? Other than abortion, was the next worst thing that ever happened to blacks, to the blacks, was the civil rights movement. No, probably slavery. The civil rights movement worse than slavery. You think so? Oh, yeah. But we'll right. get to that. Uh, did Big Mama Michelle Obama eat up all the ribs? <laughs> no, yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> That's <such> a... <laughs> Is it ever okay to call a woman fat? No. Does a chicken have lips? No. Did you have fun? I did, yes. Thank you for coming on, man, and thanks for taking on the hot seat. Uh, tell the folks how to get to your radio show, TPUSA, everything that you've done. You're okay, doing. thank you. Thank you for having me, and you can find me at smithbellspodcast.com. Or if you go to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, you Titus Ellis Smith, you can find all my stuff. Uh, yeah, smithbrospodcast.com. I'm on Rumble, Smith as on Smith Bros. Uh, yeah, just go to any of those things, and I'd be really, I'd be really appreciative. Oh, amazing! Well, I wish you well in what you're doing, man. I wish you well. Thank you so much. And don't forget to forgive your mother, all right? And, for, <laughs> okay. and forgive your father for not protecting you. I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From her. Thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget that the Fall Estate is on Locals.com. So click the link in the video description to support our work. Let me hear from you. If you have other uh, guest suggestions, type it to the producer. Let the producer know, all right? Thank you all for tuning in. And thank you, Titus. That was fun. Thank you. Yeah, it was. All right, buddy. Amazing. Amazing.